In 1519, the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan set off from Spain to circumnavigate the globe for the first time. Magellan intended to search for a westward trade route to the Maluku Islands for Spain. Instead, in 1521, the voyage led him to a fateful encounter with the archipelago that eventually came to be known as Filipinas, the Philippines. This encounter dramatically shaped the histories of Spain and the Philippines in the centuries to come. The scholarly anthology More Hispanic Than We Admit Three, published by the Bal Foundation, is both a commemoration of the Queen Centennial, of Magellan's groundbreaking journey and arrival in the Philippines, and a meditative reflection on the rich and tumultuous history that presaged it. The book has uh, it's a combination of three kinds of articles. Mm -hmm. So one, there are articles that are completely original, there are new, never published before. There are articles that are classics. And three, there are a few translations from Spanish historians or Latin American historians. The essays deal with 300 years of Spanish presence in the Philippines, trying to focus as much as possible in the agency of the Filipino people during those years. The focus is not that much on the Spaniards, it's more on the development of the Filipino society during those years. Indeed, the book contains fascinating stories based on archival sources about the first 300 years of Spanish-Philippine history and the key personalities that influenced it. Ferdinand Magellan, the first recorded European on Philippine soil. Lapu-Lapu, the first native to resist imperial Spanish control. Fray Martín de Rada, the pioneer defender of indigenous people's rights. Raja Tupas, the first major ally of the colonizers. Rajas Lakandula, Matanda, and Soliman, the last three rulers of pre-Hispanic Manila and Tundo. Nicolás de Herrera, the first native civil servant or brown Spaniard and Madre Ignacia del Espiritu Santo and Venerable Madre Jerónima de la Asuncion, the courageous founders of religious institutes for women. The Filipino response to Spanish incursion has never been hegemonic, ranging from co-optation to acculturation to outright resistance. Spain may have colonized the Philippines, but the nation that emerged from that first encounter in 1521 is born of Filipino agency. Richly embellished with prints, maps, and archival documents, more Hispanic than we admit three, is a vital contribution to the continuing study of the Hispanic record, as well as its legacy, the Hispano-Filipino identity. They are relevant today because they explain our present. The revolution in 1898 was not spontaneous. There was a long process of nation building, of the inhabitants of the Philippines feeling as a part of one community in the first place. And that, that development, that, and the, the process and through which Filipinos start seeing as one people, occurred, started to occur from the early stages of Spanish empire in Asia. In this book, we discover the complex nuances the hybridities, conflicts, entanglements that inform the foundational years of the Spanish imperial project in the Philippines. In the process, we as readers are also enriched by its transnationalist approach. In the years since 1521, Spain and the Philippines shared a common history that is as much to be celebrated as it is to be continually interrogated. Thank you.